morning. How you doing? I, uh, this is Tim Anders, pastor, Christian Home Baptist Church. And uh, unfortunately, this morning, uh, due to some ice and due to some ugly weather, uh, we were unable to have church this morning. Uh, I did want to do this little video. Uh, I do have a sermon for you. And I uh, just want to try to encourage you with the word and encourage you with uh, some good scripture and some uh, good godly guidance from the Holy Word. And again, I uh, appreciate you taking time watching this. Uh, it is a blessing to us. Uh, just let me, just a reminder, uh, we are located on uh, Fox Ridge Road, 1926 Fox Ridge Road in Sparta, North Carolina. Uh, also, uh, we have services typically, uh, we have Sunday school at 10 a.m., uh, Sunday morning worship service at 11 a.m. We have an evening service that, uh, that would be on uh, 6 o'clock. Sunday evenings and also uh, we have Tuesday night service at 7 o'clock and uh, please uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions about the services or anything about the church uh, I'd be glad to uh, answer any and all questions uh, but today I do want to uh, talk about something that I think is much needed in our church in this day and time much needed in our daily life and uh, that is hope and I did want to do uh, try to encourage you this morning in this time about having hope about utilizing hope about the effects that hope has in our lives so I hope you get something out of this I do want to say a short prayer um, Lord just thank for the day Lord I ask you, Lord bless these words and may it touch the lives of each and every one of us and help us, Lord, to go to grow in hope and uh, help us, Lord, to go forward and be a message and a symbol of hope to those around us, Lord. And we give you praise when we love Jesus. Amen. Thank you for that. Um, but hope is an extension of faith. I, that's a saying I like to have I like to use because if I don't believe in it, then I can never have hope in it. Um, hope will not exist in something that you don't have any belief in. Okay, There's got to be at least a little tiny bit of hope, a tiny bit of belief, tiny bit of faith involved um, for these things to come and either enter our minds, enter our thought process, get our emotions lifted, um, raise our spirits, whatever, you know, there's many things there, but, uh, hope is an extension of faith. It's a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. And it's also a feeling of trust. So there's a desire, there's an expectation, you know, I want to grow more in the Lord. I want to be a better Christian. I want to be a better person. I want to be a light in this world. I want to be someone that is a ambassador of Jesus through the scripture, through the words, through his actions, and let it be applied not only into my life, but my thoughts, my actions, my plans, um, my everyday walk. It is a personal relationship when you're a Christian, and I want that personal relationship to grow not only within myself, but I want to try to help others as well. So that's where that feeling of trust comes in. I have to trust it. There's a hope. I'm, I'm extending hope. I want to trust someone. I want to trust uh, a brother or sister in Christ. I want to trust someone that, you know, they hear the words of the gospel and that they'll follow through with those things. There's a feeling of trust that goes in with having hope. So take some water here. <laughs> Anybody's ever seen me at church, I, I usually take beverages and, and everything. It just helps uh, going along there. But um, I want to tell you that hope moves us forward. Uh, Christian hope is a realistic expectation of joyful longing for future good and glory based upon the reliable word of God. The more we long for the future, the less we will learn for the past and yearn from the past. Um, the less we'll care about the past if we're looking forward. Uh, hope deletes regrets and underlines expectations that diminishes drag and increases momentum. You got to understand something. If I'm constantly looking back, 
If I'm constantly dwelling in something that I cannot change, all right, it's happened, okay? It has happened, okay? I can't dwell in that. I got to move on. I might have regrets. I might have joy. I may have learned from that. I may have been like, man, I missed an opportunity. I might have got some out of it and some I left. I don't know. All experiences vary. But if I'm constantly looking behind me, I can't see what's in front of me. If I'm constantly thinking about the past, I will never go forth and grow in my day-to-day life. <clears throat> I talk to people all the time. They seem stuck in a moment. Uh, it could be a major uh, part of their life. It could be a, a, a friend or a significant person that passed on. It could be it could be a job change. It could be a life change. It could be you know something medically happened. It could be something emotional that happened. You know, but these things happen in our daily life. These things happen in our walk in this world, and it's like if we get stuck in that moment, we will not go forward. We will not move on. Okay. It's like setting up a tent. You know, I've seen these wilderness shows where, you know, they'll get there and uh, talking about, you know, like early 19th century America, back when they were heading west, you know, and you had to worry about the Indians, you had to worry about winter, you had to worry about, you know, there was war, civil war, you had to worry about, you had to worry about, you know, are you, you know, there was, there was all kinds of things you had to worry about. And it's like, you may have a planned destination, but if you're not going to make it to that planned destination, people, they would literally, they would set up camp. They would set up stakes. They would set up their town right there. And they'd never move forward, okay? And I think that's sometimes where we're at, not only in our walk of faith, but just in this daily life. Something bad happens or something just emotionally major happens, and we don't get past that moment. So... Hope will move us forward. If, if you have trouble moving forward, I would, my hope would be that you would pray, seek the scriptures, seek the word, seek his spirit, and learn and ask God for help to keep on. Because you got a purpose here, all right? If you're breathing life, if you're breathing air, hey, you can call someone, you can pat someone on the back, you can encourage someone, you can tell someone of the wisdom, you can tell someone what the Lord's done for you. You got you got a purpose, all right? So move on. Um, hope energizes the present. It is worth living today because the eternal tomorrow is so much brighter. What doomsday is for most is coronation for us. What most dread we desire. See, we know we're marching forward in this life, okay? And we know as Christians is that there'll be one day We'll either go by the way of the grave or we'll go by the rapture, all right? That's that's what a lot of Christians believe, okay? If, if I got a lot of friends and they debate when the rapture is going to happen and things like that. So, but you got to have a good realistic understanding that we're going to die one day, all right? This physical body is going to go, okay? I, we should be looking forward, to the present. We should be looking forward better days ahead. We should be looking forward, okay? Because we know, if you know the scriptures, okay? You know we're laying up treasures in heaven. You know Jesus is coming back to get his people. You know we're going to be made whole, made new. You know he's going to prepare a place for you and I, praise God. We should be thankful. And not only the, the, the grand scheme of eternal life, but we should be thankful for a brand new day every day because I get one more opportunity to praise the Lord. I get one more opportunity to worship him. I get one more opportunity to read the Bible. I get one more opportunity to, to be a blessing to someone, be a blessing to myself even. When I go open them scriptures, man, I've got, I've got favorite scriptures, buddy, and I'll go to them like, oh yeah, give me that, give me that, give me that. I'm blessing myself, you see? So let's get excited about the present day. What else will hope do? Well, I want to let you know that hope will lighten our darkness, okay? Hope does not deny or remove the reality of things, but hope is a light that will come in and pierce the darkness and destroy the darkness, and it will show us a path, and it will guide us out of a bad place and a bad spot, and it will guide us out of our doldrums, and it will guide us and lead us out of 
this this mindset sometimes sometimes doubt and fear and discouragement and all these things they'll creep in and hope is that light hope is the light that comes and destroys those things because i got hope i'm not going to be discouraged i got hope i'm going to conquer this fear i got hope i'm going to move on in the name of the lord praise god and march on praise his name yes so hope will lighten the darkness and destroy that darkness too. It'll give us a light to get out of the darkness. And as we get closer to that light, praise the Lord, that darkness is destroyed completely because the darkness cannot stay in the light. That's why this dark world don't like Jesus. That's why this dark world don't like the light and love of him. That's why this world don't want to hear nothing about redemption. They don't want to hear nothing about salvation. They don't want to hear nothing about heaven and hell because they enjoy the darkness. The world likes darkness, all right, because it covers their evil ugliness. But see, if you're a Christian, if, you, if you're walking toward the Lord, you want that light. You want that mercy. You want that grace. You want that heavenly Heavenly Spirit, you want that strength from on high, you see, go get you out of darkness. Hope increases faith. Faith fuels hope, but hope also fuels faith. And if you look through Hebrews 11, that's that's like the big chapter on faith. There's a lot of hope that gets just, just it's just dripping with hope because it talks about people. It talks about people in the past. It talks about also what the elders and the, and the folks today should do as well. And it talks about all these different scenarios in Hebrews 11. Okay. Hebrews 11. It's a great chapter. Read it. And all these mighty, mighty people that had God working in their lives, there was hope. There was hope that was just evident. Okay. If you don't have any hope, you probably aren't going to show up, you see. I'm hoping somebody watches this today. If not, I I'd give I wouldn't be doing this video. I mean, it's that simple. All right? Um the Lord's good and he will give you hope and that hope will increase your faith because I hope to brighten someone's life. I hope to touch someone's world. I hope to be a good witness. And when those hopes roll through and I get people saying, hey, Brother Tim, what you said means something to me. Hey, Brother Tim, I'm getting close to the Lord because you teach it. Hey, Brother Tim, you know what? I never saw it like that before. But, you know, because of what was said there, I'm growing closer to God. And I want you to know anything I say, all glory, if it's good, if it's positive, if it's getting you closer to the Lord, if it, if it helps your life in any way, all 100% glory, praise, worship goes to Jesus Christ, Lord, Lord, kings of kings. I'm just a vessel. I'm just an ambassador. It's he and he alone who will heal. It's he and he alone delivers. It's he and he alone that is the redeemer. So all praise goes to Jesus. Anything, any good you see in me, it's of the Lord. Praise God. Let's look here. Hope is infectious. I want you to know that this morning. Hope is it is infectious. I want to share scripture with you on this one. 1 Peter 3.15. I think it's utterly important to always have scripture in your sermons and your teachings because it's the word of God. It's the holy word of God. It's the perfect word of God. It's the complete word of God. Okay, it's complete. All right. These people say there's holes in it. They ain't got no context or they're looking at things wrong or they got some bad teaching. The, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is complete, it's whole. And if you need help with that, come talk to me. And if you don't like my answer, we'll pray together. I try to find somebody else that might help you. But the good Lord has sent us a complete work. It is the Holy Bible. 1 Peter 3.15 But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Praise the Lord. It's infectious. I tell people all the time, don't go, don't go debate the Bible with people. People that want to try to tear it down, say, well, the Bible didn't need the Bible ain't that. Oh, well, that ain't what he said. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, that's okay. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna walk up to I'm gonna tell you what Jesus did for me. Okay? The teachings of Christ, it's changed my attitude. Saved my soul. I'm redeemed. I'm on my way to heaven. It has changed my life. It has changed my perspective. I have seen things happen in 
full view with my very eyes where I felt his spirit or I have applied his word in situations time after time after time after time. And I can see something that is beyond my explanation happen. I've seen it time and time and time and time again. So lean on the word, lean on his spirit, and that gets infectious, you see, because you be like, well, the Lord loves me. He must be taking care of stuff. I prayed, this has been about three weeks ago. I prayed about something that was going on personally in my life. And I felt my spirit is like, you just need to calm down and you need to stay calm and you need to stay where you at. You need to just hold up. And I want to tell you something. There's been three different things that have happened since that time. That if I had done what this old head and flesh wanted to do, I would have missed out on probably. I definitely would have been missing out on some of this stuff. I know I would have missed out. I know I would. No probably about it. Because I would have been in a different place in a different time. Okay? If I know a football game is happening, uh, let's say down in Charlotte, all right? and I drive to Roanoke looking for that football game, I ain't going to find it, okay? Because I'm not in the right place, okay? Sometimes God's going to be like, you need to stand still. Sometimes God's going to be like, you just hold on. God's going to be like, hey, you hold that rope. You just hold on. You'll be, be all right. Something's coming. Just wait. And sometimes that happens. But I'm going to tell you what, that hope's infectious. Because that built my faith up. Boy, that built my spirit up. I was like, yes, Lord, Lord, I'm so thankful. Lord, I'm so thankful that I waited. Lord, I'm so thankful I didn't just jump off and just do my own thing, Lord. And that happens time and time again. I want you to know that, folks. It happens time and time again. Hope is infectious. There is healing in hope. I want to tell you, there is healing of hope. What I try to do when I talk to people is try to give them some hope to start with, Okay. And I will try to tell them something positive about that situation. Or I will try to tell them something positive about themselves. Or I'll try to tell them something positive about that moment. If someone comes to me and they're on their just, just bad road, I, I, I've done this so many times. People be like, man, I hate to come to you. I, you know, I'm broken. I'm busted. I ain't got this. I ain't got that. Usually my first response is like, hey, I thank you for coming to talk to me. I appreciate that. Um, it's an honor. It's a blessing. Um, let, let's work together. Do something positive, you see, okay? Someone broken and busted comes your life, and you be like, well, you got what you deserved, and you just kind of leave them right laying. Man, where's your good Samaritan at? Man, where's, where's your hope? Did Jesus do that to you? Has Jesus done that to you? He never done that to me. So if I've got the teachings and the word and the spirit and the love and the hope and the grace and the mercy and the joy of him working in my life, and I'm not willing to share that, or I'm not willing to take time to share that, or I'm not willing to look out for others and try to help them in their need, I need to be praying. Because the good Lord did not distribute all this mercy and forgiveness and love and all these great things in your life. Just to have you just sit around and be like, well, hey, it's me and myself. And I'm just going to hang on to me and myself. You see, there's healing and hope. You can help people heal up. You can help people, you know, grow out of stuff. You can help people direct them out of some things. And again, all praise goes to the Lord. All glory goes to the Lord. It's Him and He alone. You see, you help folks. And it comes back to you. Trust me, it'll come back to you. Um, anybody that's ever done any heavy-duty praying that I know of, anybody that's ever been in any kind of service of the Lord, one of the things I pray is like, Lord, let them reap all the times they've prayed. Lord, let them reap all the times they've done something for you. Lord, let them reap it, Lord. Let them reap a blessing, Lord. Let them reap some joy. Let them reap some forgiveness. Let them reap some hope, Lord. Let that show up in their life. Let it be bountiful, Lord. Let it be overwhelming. Cascade them, Lord. Just overwhelm them, Lord. Let them know that beyond a doubt it had to be you, Lord. There's healing and hope. 
You know, hope is practical. Hope does not mean we just sit and wait. No, hope motivates. It's practical. It's kind of like, you remember, now this is old school. Okay, I'm going to get me some more water. Carolina won yesterday. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So, you know, um, it, hope is pra hope, uh, hope's practical. It, it fuels you. I think about uh, Popeye. You remember Popeye? Uh, you remember that cartoon? Okay. And you had Popeye, and he got there, and old Popeye, he'd be, he, old Bluto show up, that bully, and just, just, just beat the ever living daylights out of him. I mean, just wear him out, wear him out bad, like an old wash rag, just wring him dry. I mean, just leave him over the corner, all pitiful. And old Popeye get there, and he'd be like, if I can get my spinach, I'd be all right. He'd open up that can of spinach. Half time he's sucking up through his pipe. Now, that I didn't understand. But, yeah, but he'd be gulping on that spinach, all right? And then you'd hear the music, da 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 You know, the music kinking, and he'd go in, and he'd just clean house. I mean, he, he just turned into like this Superman guy, like Tornado, and just go whipping through folks, you know, try to avenge the bad that happened. You know, hope hope does that, you know. Hope will give you fuel. It'll pick you back up to fight the enemy. It'll pick you back up to go in that battle. It'll pick you back up to go against the darkness, against the wickedness of this time against spirits and principalities of the air. It will do that. It'll give you hope. There's a world out there today telling you that all these things are right and all these things are normal and all these things that God calls a abomination that we should just accept and just say, hey, it's right and true. You got free will. I got free will. All right? We're going to answer for our free will, okay? If the Bible says something was wrong, it was wrong, okay? I don't care what social media says. I don't care what the world says, okay? It's wrong. And I'm here to tell you, there was one perfect. His name was Jesus, and they killed him, all right? So I'm here to tell you, when you start talking truth, when you start talking light, when you start talking righteousness, when you start talking holiness, when you start talking about you need to get your sins under the blood of Jesus to get to heaven, you're going to find out real quick who's backing you and who's backing up. But hope, hope has a practical application because you'll have people walk away. You'll have people that'll disappoint you. You'll have scenarios. Hey, there's a lot of times things don't go the way I want them. I mean, that, that happens. There are times when things just do not go the way I want them to go. And I'm sitting there like, Lord, help me, Lord. And there'd be a little bit of hope. It'd like this water. Mm-mm, like this water. It's refreshing. It'll bless your soul. It'll pick you up. And you can take that hope. And you can take that hope. That extension of your faith, I talked about that's what hope is, and you can apply that hope into those situations. Hope purifies. Hear this this morning. Whatever persecution experience in this world, the day is coming when we will not be just called sons of God. We will be like son of God. He's going to be blessing us. We're going to be resurrected. We're going to be made whole. Okay? Jesus ascended. Jesus was made whole. Jesus coming back. Go get his people. All right. He's going. To, that's why there ain't no sin going into heaven. This flesh ain't going into heaven. Hallelujah on that. We're going to be just like him. We're going to be made whole, made new, made righteous, made pure. And hope purifies us. If we look at John, 1 John 3, 1 and 3, 1 John 
3, 1 and 3, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. It's a scripture, folks. For we shall see him as he is, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. See, I, I'm going to tell you something. I've told this so many times. I've told this story so many times, okay? Me and the love of my life, Miss Sarah, we date one time, okay? And I know, oh, I had to get ready. Oh, I get ready. Oh, she's coming up the road. We're going to see each other. Oh, it's going to be great. There's a time we didn't live in the same area. She's coming up the road to see me. I was living up the mountain. She's living down off the coast. And she's coming up to see me. Oh, man. And I had, oh, I got to shave. And I know you see this gray thing on my lips and this gray thing on my chin. You're like, well, he already lost that ability. But back then, I was clean shaving. I get in that shower, I'd wash up, and I get, you know, but I get there and I'd make sure, oh, I'm shaving. It's shaving time. And I'd purdy myself up, man. I'd put on that musk, and I'd get me some clean clothes on, and I'd wash myself up and slick myself up, purdy myself up best I could. I was getting ready. Somebody significant was coming to see me, and I wanted to be the best that I could be. You know what? We should live every day like that for Christ. Lord, I just want to clean myself up. I want to slick myself up. I want to purdy myself up. I'm going to get on that good garment. I'm going to get on that robe of righteousness. I'm going to get on those things. And I'm going to pull off this old flesh. I'm going to crucify this old flesh, you see. And it's that hope that purifies us. Lord, I want to be more like you. My extension of faith is I want to be more like Jesus. And if I'm going to be more like Jesus... Go have to let go of some things. Go have to get that attitude right. Go have to get that personality right. Go have to get that mouth right. Go have to get my actions right. You see what I'm saying? Hope purifies. Hope stabilizes as well. If we look here, hope is a stabilizer. And I think about stabilizing, all right, it makes us righteous. And it also gives us clarity, okay? Clarity. Now, hear that. Now, if we look at Hebrews, there's two verses in Hebrews here. Uh, Hebrews 6, 19. Hebrews 6, 19, it says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Okay? It's an anchor of the soul. Okay? It grounds us. It keeps us steady. It gives us clarity. You see, that hope, I've got hope in Jesus. I've got hope in the scriptures. I got hope in my salvation. I got hope in the spirit. I got hope in this walk of righteousness that I'm doing in this life. I've got hope and all those things, they ground me. And what I mean by grounding is I ain't going to and fro like any old thing in the brick. Oh, mercy. Fall's my favorite time of year. Anybody that knows me well knows I love fall. And something about fall I like. I like seeing these leaves and when they go flopping off in the ground, they flop off in the road and you get that big breeze. And I used to work from home and I had a window that was looking up the hill. And it just, I always loved that. That big old breeze coming. You just see these, you just, and it's, the, the leaves would be tap dancing on the road. It's and it is a beautiful sound. It was a beautiful vision, you know, and it was nice to look at. But would you really want to be that leaf? You just go any old way the wind blows. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Don't do that. I think that's some people's theology. We're going to, we're going to test the wind to see which way social media or see which way the congregation, hello, or see which way it be maybe less offensive or they might want to hear this a little bit more, a little bit better. 
you know? And you may be denying yourself what God want you to say and do. Well, I don't hurt anybody's feelings. Well, I don't offend nobody. Well, you know, I just, you know, I just, I, I don't judge anybody. You hear these things being said. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, he's put the word of God in a lot of folk. He's given the word of God as instruction to everybody. And when you go through that word of God, there's some judgment. There's some, you need to let go of some stuff. There's some holy living, some righteous living. It'll be an anchor. It says here in Hebrews 10, 34, for ye had compassion of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have a heaven, a better, and an enduring substance. See, when we think about we think about what's waiting on us. We think about what we're going toward. We think about our better days. We think about what the Lord has prophesied in the scriptures that he's gone to prepare a place for you and I. When we think about these things, when we think about what talks about heaven, we think about what it says about hell. And hey, if you're born again, you saved by the grace of the Lord. If, if you one of his, you ain't ever got to worry about that. But I got hope. And that hope, oh man, it gives me clarity. Because I say to myself, should I be doing this or should I be doing that? And then we get to make that free will choice. Yeah, we do. <laughs> We're going to bring it back right here in our hands. It comes back to us. Did I do the right thing? Did I choose to do the right thing? Was I willing to do the right thing? Lord, help us all, including me. I'm far from perfect, okay? We need to help each other. Hope. Hope will do that. It will stabilize us. I want to read one more, and this one right here is Hope Defense. Hope is a defense. And Paul talked about it kind of like a helmet, Okay? He described it as a helmet, uh, Ephesians 6, 17. And it says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's when he's talking about the whole armor of God. You see, that hope, it's a defense mechanism. I can't have salvation without having hope in Christ. I can't have salvation without having hope in the resurrection. I can't have salvation without the hope and knowing that my sins are forgiven, you see. So hope is a main ingredient in the salvation, you see. And that helmet of salvation, it protects us against the spiritual, wily, ugly, nasty things that are out there, okay? Those intangible things. I don't know why I was thinking what I was thinking. I don't know why I was feeling what I was feeling. Man, I got I got ripped out yesterday going down the road. I know everybody knows what it's like. I guess he's driving. It's always he's driving. Um, he should just start walking. He he'd be less he'd be less upset if he walked everywhere, I guess. But uh I got there and I pulled into a parking lot and and dummy me, okay, I was at fault at a lot of this. Because I didn't turn in to the entrance. I turned in to the back end, and it was a small little, like, little three-inch, little little sidewalk-looking thing. It was just a little hub-looking thing, okay? But, I mean, I just easily bounced off of that. Well, there was somebody came in right behind me, and there was somebody that was coming the other direction, all right? And he went in the right way. And I got all bent out. You ever done something wrong and then start get out get all bent out and try to blame some <laughs> blame somebody else? And if you just step back, it's like, you know, if I'd done the right thing to start with, I wouldn't be in this situation. Okay? But that didn't happen. No, no. I pulled in the wrong place. I had a car in front of me going toward me. I had a truck behind me. I just stopped. 
I let them move around me. I was like, I ain't about to move. Because I move forward, I'm going to hit somebody. If I move back, I'm going to hit somebody. I'm stuck. I got stuck. You know why I got stuck? Because I did something stupid and I did the wrong thing. So I want to tell you something. In this life, in your road to righteousness, in this highway of holiness, you're going to do some stupid stuff some days. Cause you flesh. I'm going to do stuff. I'm doing stupid stuff. I'm flesh. Got to get that hand on salvation. Lord, why? 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 Uh, it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, it says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation. There it is again in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. It's the hope of salvation. It's that helmet. When you and I have that helmet on, when you and I have that, we're looking through the eyes. You know, I've, I've, asked, I've asked God this so many times. Lord, help me to see them as you see them. I got people, man, they absolutely get on my fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth nerve. I mean, they just, they tap dancing on my head. And I'm like, they, they just getting, they, they all up in my business. They just all upsetting me. And I'm sitting there like, if I back up and use wisdom, Lord, help me to see them people as you see them. And you see that two things happen. Either I don't do that and I wind up doing something stupid and I got a car coming at me, a car coming behind me, and I'm like, boy, I made a bad choice there. Or I back up, don't do just 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 wait sometimes, like I talked about, or just like Lord help me to move forward in a holy and righteous way and do something that's good and pure and lovely and joyful. And let his spirit and let his teachings and let his presence work this thing out. So that's the 10 things right there that you can get from hope. I hope you got something out of that. That is my hope. And again, I just want to tell you that uh, my name is Tim Anders. I am pastor of Christian Home Baptist Church. And uh, we are located at 1926 Fox Road Drive. I want to say that one more time. And before I go, I just want to invite every one of y'all out. And if you have a home church, please pray for our church. Uh, we pray for churches all the time. And if you don't have a Tuesday night service or a Sunday night service, um, we are we do have those services. We 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 love visitors. And uh, like I said, that's how we get to know about other people's churches as well. So we can pray for them as well. So do want to say a prayer. And again, if you got any comments, any questions, any thoughts, please contact me. Um, message me and get a hold of me and uh, I'll be glad be glad to uh, help in any way that I possibly can so let's uh, um, let's pray Lord Jesus Lord I ask you Lord let this hope this message of hope come through and help others help himself Lord help all that listens Lord and help us Lord God to grow forth grow grow on grow forward grow more Lord Jesus that word grow Lord help us to grow more like you we love you, Jesus. And again, help us, Lord, to move on and not dwell in past hurts, but move on in the faith, move on in the positive, move on in knowing that you will make us better and more like you and less like us and less like this old sin-sick world. And Lord, we give you praise in the sweet name of Jesus. Lord, if they be out there, Lord, it needs salvation. Lord, I ask you, Lord God, to help them to see their need of a Savior and help them to see, Lord, the sin in their life and that they need you because you're the only way, Lord Jesus, to see God, see the Heavenly Father, see, get to heaven one day, avoid hell. Lord, we need to avoid hell. We don't want that eternal damnation. We want to spend eternity, Lord God, with you and heavenly places, Lord Jesus, Lord, we give you praise. And again, bless and keep us, and guide us, and help us, Jesus, in all things. And we love you, Lord. Amen. And again, um, some of y'all see this on Facebook. Some of this, some of y'all see this on YouTube. But again, if I can help in any way, please get a hold of me. Message me. I'm easy to find on Facebook. I'm easy to find on Messenger. Uh, text message, call, whatever. Get a hold of me. And uh, be glad to help. So again, uh, this is Tim Anders, Pastor Christian Home Baptist Church. Hope you have a grand, glorious day. God bless.